Have you glued down your tesserae only later to discover a sharp point or jagged edge? If you don't want to dig it out and you just want to smooth it over, then today's video is for you. We'll discuss four ways you can fix tesserae on your substrate. And you can use these methods whether you plan to grout your mosaic or not. Let's get to it. Welcome back and if you're new here, my name is Julie. And on this channel, we talk about tips, tricks, tools, adhesives, materials, and specific mosaic projects, all to shorten your learning curve when it comes to creating mosaic art. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. As mosaic artists, we have the best intentions when we're tiling. Whether we're making art for a client or family and friends, or we just want to sit down with a piece and tile to our heart's content. And yeah, we're human, so sometimes we can miss things. When I'm tiling a mosaic, I often feel like a baseball player who's going up to bat. I remember when my son was growing up and we were talking to him about all the little things he needed to think about before he went up to bat. And mosaics is kind of the same way. You know, a baseball player has a million things going through their mind of what they need to check and remember and ba 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 before they swing. And mosaic art is a lot like that. We've got so many things we need to remember and keep track of and be aware of, where all of our fingers, we don't want to hit and bump anything. And well, sometimes things happen. And those things could be tiling tesserae of different thicknesses and not getting everything to the same level, or maybe tiling on an unusual substrate that's a little tricky. Sometimes when the stars align and you're able to sit down for hours and hours and just tile to your heart's content. Sometimes tile placement is not top of mind. Maybe your tesserae sinks into the adhesive or maybe something gets bumped. And then all of these things go unnoticed as your tesserae sits and your adhesive dries and fully cures right there on your substrate. And then whatever the case may be, you come back later only to discover you don't like the tile placement or maybe something is pointed or a jagged edge. And you don't want to pull that tesserae off the substrate. You don't want to pull your mosaic apart. Now I'm not finger pointing because I am so guilty of this as well. It doesn't mean you're sloppy. It doesn't mean you don't know what you're doing. It does mean you are in the mosaic zone and that's a really good feeling. After all, creating mosaic art, it's imperfect. It's handmade. We want to see those little things. We don't want it to be just so perfect. So we need to know how to fix these situations when the tesserae is pointed or jagged and it's on adhesive that has fully dried and cured. Thankfully, we have options. So in today's video, I'll share four different ways you can get those pointed or sharp edges under control and no longer a hazard to your mosaic. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. Before we get started, there are a few things we need to go over. Always, right? What I'll show you today can be used on your mosaic, whether you plan to grout it or not. Sometimes you can use grout to hide or buffer sharp points or jagged tesserae. But in the case of today's video, I'll demonstrate on an ungrouted mosaic. Actually, it's two mosaics, which are these cute letters here, X and O, which I recently made here on the channel in another video. They're a mixed media mosaic, and I will include a link to that video down below in the description in case you'd like to check it out. You can access this information if you're watching on your desktop computer by clicking show more underneath the video description. And if you're watching on your phone or your tablet, you can click the down arrow to the right of the video title. 
As you can see, I've finished off the sides and backs of these mosaics by painting them. So I'll need to be very careful not to mess or scuff them up. One way to reduce any damage would be to tape up the edges with painter's tape before I get started. But I'm a rebel and I'm going to be risky here and I'm not going to do that. Also, these methods we're about to go over work well on all different kinds of traditional mosaic tesserae. So I'm talking about glass, ceramic, porcelain, etc. As I mentioned in the Mixed Media XO Letters video, typically with glass tesserae, the color runs all the way through it. Yes, there are some exceptions. And with the ceramic, for example, the color does not. It's just a glaze that sits on top of the clay. So I want you to keep this in mind before you decide to file your tesserae. Using the methods from today's video work best if your tesserae is dry. That means the adhesive is fully and firmly cured. And one final note before we get started. When we are filing our tesserae, we are putting dust into the air and we have the possibility of those sharp points or little shards of glass or glaze coming off of the tesserae. So I would strongly suggest that you wear a dust mask and you wear protective eyewear. And I will include some options for you down below in the description. All right, let's go. Let's get started with the first method, and that is using a mini file. Now this is exactly what I referenced in the Mixed Media XO Letters video. They're easy to use, pretty inexpensive, and don't require electricity. Who knew a set of files could be so adorable? These little files are the cutest and they're super handy. I love them so much I actually have a couple sets and I may have a problem with compulsive file buying. That's what I've been told. They're able to get into tight spaces and keep the filing focused to just what needs to be smoothed down. There are lots of blade options whether you need a flat blade, rounded, pointed, or even triangular. I just file the offending tesserae until it's where I want it to be. And then I'll lightly run my finger over the area every so often to see if I'm getting close in my filing. I like this method for how focused I can be on a particular area when filing since the blades aren't very wide. I find it's a great method if I don't have a very big area to work on like if it's just a pointed tessera. But if I wanted to smooth down, let's say a long edge of a tessera, there are other options I would prefer. But this method does a great job for getting rid of sharp points and minimal smoothing of edges. They're certainly handy to have in your creative space. And I found that they work great not only on tessera, but also on substrates. And like I said earlier, I have lots of other files as well that are all different sizes, which I use on bigger tesserae. But for these mosaics here, a mini file is the perfect size. I'll include a list down below in the description for all of the tools that I'm using in today's video in case you'd like to check them out. The next method is using a sanding or grinding stone. And yep, you guessed it, I've done a video here on the channel all about how to use one of these on your tesserae before you adhere them to your substrate, and I'll include a link down below in the description so you can check it out. This is another really handy, inexpensive sanding or grinding tool to keep in your mosaic toolbox. But if you're careful, you can actually use this stone on your tesserae that's already adhered to a substrate as well. Especially if the offending point or jagged edge is quite pronounced from your substrate. You just want to carefully sand on the tessera 
by going back and forth while trying to avoid making contact with the substrate. And sometimes all the tessera needs is just a little sanding to fix the problem. Just take it slow so you can keep the filing focused in a particular area. You might have better, quicker results if you keep the sanding or grinding to shorter movements. Like I said, this is a super handy, inexpensive tool to keep in your creative space. And just like the mini files we talked about earlier, there's no electricity required. Next up is a pricier method that does require electricity, but wow, does it take care of things quickly and beautifully. And that method is an electric glass grinder. I've got two here in the studio, one for glass and one for ceramic and porcelain. So when I'm grinding or sanding down a tessera that's already adhered to a substrate, I'm coming at the grinding head at an angle. I don't want to accidentally hit the substrate with the grinding head. An electric glass grinder is a great tool to have in your creative space, whether you're grinding tessera before adhering it to a substrate, as well as after, like what we're talking about today. It speeds up the process, and it makes your grinding or smoothing down of your tesserae more even, smooth, and exact. And I'll take it slow to make sure I'm only grinding the tessera and not the substrate. I also want to make sure I'm not grinding down too much of the tessera. I'd rather go at it five times than once and over grind it. I've had one of my glass grinders for over 20 years or so, and I've only had to change the grinding head on it. They're basically workhorses in your studio and creative space and help you get back to tiling quicker. Yay, that's what we want. Because electric grinders are so good at what they do, you have to be mindful, aware, and careful as you're grinding down your tesserae. And yes, I do have water in my glass grinder, which keeps the bit and tessera cool, but I'll make sure to wipe off my entire mosaic and the substrate once I'm done. Now, because I came in at an angle with the mosaic in order to avoid hitting the substrate with the grinding head, I may need to go back with a smaller file and grind down a little bit more where the tessera meets the substrate. Again, whether you work with glass, ceramic, or porcelain, an electric glass grinder is a great tool and investment for your mosaic art. They can level up your art, and like I've been saying, they're such a time saver. I'll list a few of my favorite glass grinders down below in the description in case you're in the market for one, and I'll even include the model that I've had for 20 years. Yes, they still make it, and it is that good. The next method is also a little pricier like the glass grinder, but it does a beautiful job of smoothing out jagged edges, taking care of those sharp points, and it does it easily and beautifully. This method is using a Dremel. What's a Dremel, you ask? Well, it's an electric rotary tool that allows you to change the head on it to complete so many different tasks. With a Dremel, you can dig out grouted tesserae. You can sand your wood substrates. You can cut down or drill holes in your substrates and tesserae. And yes, you can even grind or smooth down mosaic tesserae. But like I said, there's so much you can do with a Dremel in your mosaic work. I've got a few here in the studio and they are a huge time saver for my mosaic art. One requires being plugged into an electrical outlet and the other is a rechargeable model. But again, you can change out the bit at the end of the tool for whatever task you need to do. When it comes to grinding or smoothing down sharp or jagged tesserae, a Dremel can quickly and easily take care of the job by running the grinding head along the offending tessera. Much like what I did with the electric glass grinder, 
I'm going somewhat slow, making sure I'm very focused and accurate as to what I'm grinding. Now, unlike the electric glass grinder, I don't have water involved with the Dremel. This means the tessera will heat up, which can cause it to crack. So I'm being very careful to limit my smoothing or grinding to just a few short periods of time. This is a great method if you just have a little tessera or a point to smooth out and a file just can't do the job. In a pinch, this works great. I'll include a list down below in the description for all of the tools that I used in today's video in case you'd like to check them out. Question of the day, let me know down in the comments, how do you grind or smooth down tesserae that's already adhered to a substrate? I would love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification so you never miss a single upload and let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future video. I'll see you soon. Bye. Eh? We're good? It is a stormy day here in Miami, so we have all the lights. They're set up differently today, and we're trying to simulate sunlight. So hopefully you're getting that vibe, because it is gloomy and woo, wet, yeah. And the air conditioner is coming on now, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, okay, bye-bye. We are just so happy today. Why is that? I don't know, but I love it. We're waiting for the air conditioner to fully wind down. And we're on. As they say, let's rock and roll. It's so hot. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Seriously, we're in Miami and it is, uh, 81 degrees and might as well be 200% humidity. Yes, I know mathematically that is not accurate, but you know what I'm saying. Oh God, oh God. No, let's start over. Start over. Bam, what? That second one was better. Keep that second one. Okay. Let's do that all over again. Okay. Why can't I say this? Why can't I say this? Like the gra- I am so glad you're here. I'm so thankful for your support and I will see you soon. You take care. All right. I think we're done. We're done. We're done. If you're looking for more mosaic inspiration, you can check out one of these two videos. Until then, see ya.